When it comes to web browsers, Chrome is kind of the default standard, and that's kind of sad to say, but as a FOSS advocate, if that's what you want to call me, I didn't want to use Chrome. Like, I just really don't want to use straight up Google Chrome. It just doesn't sit well with me. And I've had my problems with Firefox, as anybody who's watched the channel knows. I've moved away from Firefox several times and kind of gone back. I just have problems with it. So I've been experimenting with other Chrome-based browsers that aren't Google Chrome, but at least have the advantages that Chrome kind of offers. Broad accessibility across every website. They're, it's because it's basically Chrome. Everything works in it, supposedly. We'll talk about that later. Wide availability of the browser itself. And speed. We, the browser has to be fast. I mean, really, fast is a relative term, obviously, but really what I'm looking for is it to not be slow which is something that I experience on Firefox quite often. So over the last month or so, I've gone through and tested two of the most popular Chrome-based browsers, Brave and on Google Chromium. Now, I've made videos about both of these browsers before, and my initial impression of Brave was that it was meh. I think I even entitled the video, Brave Browser is Meh. I've also made videos about on Google Chromium in the last month, and I was okay with it, but I had some issues, mainly dealing around the fact that it doesn't have any syncing capability at all, and it's hard to set up because of that, because I have multiple devices, I kind of need sync, and if you want sync in, on Google Chromium, you have to look at a third party, which is not always a great thing. So what I thought I'd do today is kind of combine these two experiences and talk about them and compare Brave and on Google Chromium. Now this isn't a comprehensive versus feature versus feature kind of thing. That's just not going to happen. It would take too long and would be mostly redundant sim simply because they're mostly the same. But I think I will go through and cover most of the main points that most people will care about. So let's go ahead and jump in. So if you were to look at this without actually cheating and looking in the title bar, you wouldn't know whether I was showing you on screen right now was Brave or on Google Chromium, outside of a few key differences. And those differences are, of course, the title bar says Brave, but also we have a line up here in the address bar. That's the only difference you're going to see compared to something like this, which is on Google Chromium. So this is on Google Chromium right here. There's no Brave line. That's the difference in terms of user interface, at least in terms of the user facing features. The settings panels are completely different, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But in terms of UI, they look like Google Chrome. They act like Google Chrome. They smell like Google Chrome. They're basically Google Chrome, but with features ripped out and features put in. At least in terms of Brave, they have features put in. With on Google Chromium, mostly they ripped features out and then just kind of left it as the bare bones thing. And we'll talk about more about that as well. So the first thing I should talk about is availability. So if you want to download these things, you can get them pretty much everywhere. Brave, I've found, is a little bit more available in terms of actually having binary support in most repos. If you want to download it on Ubuntu or Arch or whatever, you can find Brave in the standard repositories. It's not so simple when it comes to on Google Chromium, Whereas it's in some repos, it's not in other repos, and in some repos you have to build it. It's kind of a mess in terms of that. So in terms of availability, you can pretty much get them everywhere. So the next thing I want to talk about is extension support. Because these are based on Chrome, extension support is very good. There was no problems with any extensions that I've tried. You just go, go to the Chrome web store and you can go through and use any extension that would be available for Chrome. Now, Brave supports this out of the box. And you just go to the, the web store, click Add to Brave, and it adds it just like you would an extension in Chrome or Firefox. It just adds the same way. With on Google Chromium, you have to take an extra step because that functionality is actually turned off by default. You have to install a extension that will allow you to use the web store. And you can do that from a GitHub page. It's fairly easy. Three or four steps. It's not a big deal. And I can see why they turn that feature off and or have more have pulled that feature out but it's one of those things you have to kind of think about when you make your decision on which of these browsers to use so in terms of extension support once you get past that added extra step on on google chromium 
the extension support is actually exactly the same because it just uses the Chrome Web Store. Now, probably the key difference here between Brave and on Google Chromium is the syncing capability. Now, out of the box on Google Chromium, which is what you're seeing on the screen right now, is completely devoid of any syncing capability whatsoever. There's nothing here that even comes close to resembling syncing support. So if you want to sync bookmarks or open tabs or any of that stuff, you're going to have to look towards an extension to do that. And that's just the way it is. There's no fixing that. They've actually pulled that out. Now, that's not only that, that's not their problem. I mean, their whole stick is anti-Google stuff, so they don't want to put any Google stuff in there at all. Even if Google allowed them to have syncing capability, they wouldn't want it because they're on Google Chromium. So if you're going to use on Google Chromium, go in knowing that you're not going to have any syncing capabilities built in by default. You'll have to use some kind of third-party extension to do that. Now, with Brave, which is what you're seeing here, Brave has its own syncing capability built in. It's done via blockchain, of all things, which is whatever. Um, I mean, because of course it is. I mean, Brave's thing is cryptocurrency, and I'm not even going to talk about that much in this video, but the, the point is, is that that's how they sync stuff. I found it to be okay in terms of syncing stuff. Syncing open tabs, not so much. It doesn't actually do that at all, but syncing bookmarks works just fine. It did take some time. Once you set up the, the chain between your devices, it does take some time for that information to go from one device to another. If I remember correctly, it was about 10 minutes. So don't expect that thing to be a, you know, really fast in terms of syncing capability. And it supposedly will sync other things too, but I haven't noticed any of that stuff, mostly because it's not important to me. I will also say that it doesn't do a very good job of syncing your Brave account. So there are Brave accounts. You can sign up for one, specifically if you're going to get involved in their little cryptocurrency nonsense thing. If you sign up for that in on your desktop and then you sync via the blockchain to, say, your phone, those accounts aren't going to travel over, so you'll have to sign in in both places. And that also kind of means that if you don't have an account and you're kind of earning that either a cryptocurrency without, you know, ever really intending to cash that stuff in, but maybe someday you, whatever, if you're going through this without an account, you're kind of collecting that cryptocurrency on two different places, on two different devices with two different wallets. It could get very messy trying to combine those things. So if you're going to get into this for the cryptocurrency, which I recommend you don't do that, uh, I don't think that crypto, the, the bat cryptocurrency is going to go to the moon or anything like that. I highly doubt that. But if, if you were to do that, just keep in mind that the best way to do that is to start off with both your, all your devices on the same wallet so that you don't have to go through and mess around with multiple wallets. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but just keep that in mind. So in terms of syncing capability, Brave wins outright simply because it has one and Google Chromium does not. So the next one I want to talk about is speed. Now I could go through and run browser speed tests and that would tell you all the information you need to know. But for the most part, I found that browser speed tests don't really tell you all that much. For me, the way I determine if a browser is fast or not is just kind of experiencing it going through and using it for a month or two or whatever, and just kind of getting a feel for how fast things are. In terms of these two browsers, they're identical. I haven't noticed any situation where either of them is slower than the other, or that they're significantly faster really than Firefox was. I had some problems with Firefox where things, specifically Google products, were so slow. I never had that problem with either of these two browsers, but I wouldn't expect to because this is basically Google Chrome just with stuff pulled out of it or replaced. So all the Google products work really well in this, whereas they didn't really work that well in Firefox. In terms of the two browsers compared side by side, I did not notice any differences in speed. They're just... It was fast enough. I never noticed anything as slow. Like I said at the beginning, it's not really that the browser has to be fast. It just ha it can't be slow, you know, because you you don't notice when I'm really when all the websites load exactly the same speed. If, as long as there's not an outlier or something, it's when you've come across a website that's really slow that it stands out like a sore thumb. So in terms of speed, they're both relatively the same. Now here's the biggest stumbling block for what I think most people is going to be, and that is DRM support for streaming services. Now, supposedly, both on Google Chromium and Brave 
support wild vine or wide vine or whatever it's called drm service and that's what is required for most streaming services to work however i wasn't able to get either netflix or discovery plus which are the two streaming services i subscribe to to work in either of these browsers they both have errors Oddly enough, they don't say, hey, your browser is not compatible. The Well, on D Discovery Plus, I did get that error. But with Netflix and both of them, I got an error that said, please update your DRM support or something like that. And it tells you to go to this Chrome extensions or Chrome components web, uh, you know, settings page, update it. In on Google Chromium, that exists. So, it, for example... It, I'll just show you, show you here, if I can zoom in just a little bit. It tells you to check for updates for this one here, the Wild Vine or Wide Vine content decryption module. It tells you to check that update. And even click, clicking this, it does nothing for me. It doesn't change whether or not Netflix or Discovery Plus work. It just doesn't. It just, it just doesn't work. On Brave, you can go to the same thing, but if you if we go back here... And we look at some of the names here. Just keep in mind just what this looks like. You'll, you'll notice that most of this stuff is just random names. But if we go to the same place on Brave, you'll notice that they're completely different. So there's a lot of stuff here that says Brave stuff, right? So there's some stuff that's the same, but there's a lot of Brave stuff here added in. And the one thing you'll see that's not actually here is the Widevine thing that it tells you to update. So... I don't know whether or not that means that Brave doesn't support Widevine or whatever it's called, or if maybe I was doing something wrong, but either way, the bottom line was, in terms of streaming support for both of these browsers, I couldn't get the two streaming services that I subscribe to to work at all. And that's kind of a big deal, right? Because streaming is a big thing that people use on the internet these days, and while I'm not as big a streamer as a lot of other people, I don't binge a lot of TV shows anymore, I can still see that it being a big problem for people who want to use this browser as their daily driver. Now, for on Google Chromium, I don't think that that's as big a deal because the audience for on Google Chromium are people who are interested in privacy, are interested in, you know, kind of pulling out of the sphere of companies that collect your information. They may or may not be the same people who subscribe to things like Netflix or Discovery Plus. They are probably getting their media from other sources. I mean, obviously, there's going to have some people who use on Google Chromium and, and subscribe to Netflix. There will be some overlap there. But I think that in terms of the number of people who use Brave and also subscribe to Netflix, you'll have a lot more people who are doing both of those things. And because of that, the fact that Brave does not actually work with Netflix is kind of a pain in the butt. Now, it's possible that I was doing something wrong. So I did some Googling. I've been trying to get it to work. And all the solutions that I found on the Internet, or at least the few that I tried, just did not work. Some of them told me to uh, disable the shields for Netflix, which I went through and did. It, one of them told me to go through and disable Adblock, which I went through and, you know, did that as well. It didn't change anything. No. All right, so the last thing that I want to talk about is bookmarks and settings management. So we talked a little bit about syncing capability, and we realized that the Brave has sync, and on Google Chrome does not have sync at all. And that's just the first part of it. So if you are going to use on Google Chromium, managing your bookmarks is a pain in the butt, but they both use the same bookmarks manager. The problem is, is with on Google Chromium, you have to manage your bookmarks more than you ever will with Brave because Brave will actually sync from another Brave browser if that's what you want to, if you've already been using it. But it also, I also found that Brave imported browser bookmarks better than on Google Chromium did. For whatever reason, on Google Chromium took bookmarks and put them all in one fo folder and it completely ignored the existing folder structure that I already had. I'm kind of very picky with how I organize my bookmarks. I have everything in folders and where it needs to go. Even if one of the folders is called stuff, there are other folders inside that folder. So the thing is, when you import your bookmarks into Google Chromium, it kind of shuffles them all together. And the bookmarks manager that it comes with is just kind of utter garbage. You can't drag and drop things really all that well at all. I talked about this in the Google Chromium video. Uh, you can you can drag things back and forth between the sidebar and here, but you can't 
if you want to reorder things, you can't do that. And that's really what you want to do. You also want to, if, because when you come here after importing stuff, all of your bookmarks will be on this one page. And it'd be great if you could go through and select a whole bunch of stuff and then drag them into the folders where they were supposed to be in the first place, but it doesn't work. With Brave, they use the same bookmark manager. Ignore the fact that it looks different. It's the same. And it has the same problems as the in Google Chrome thing. There's no drag and drops here. But I found that when I imported from Firefox all my bookmarks, I didn't have any of the same problems. I didn't have where it went through and just kind of shuffle everything together. The folder structure remained there. It didn't put them all in the bookmarks bar where I wanted them to be, so I still had to move them from the imported bookmarks folder to the bookmarks bar, but at least the structure remained, you know, so that's a definitely a plus in terms of Brave, because the thing is, is that it's not a huge deal like going through and doing that one time but the fact that there's no sync in on Google Chromium means that every device you use you're gonna have to go through and reorder those bookmarks every single time and that's a big pain in the ass especially if you have a ton of bookmarks I mean a lot of people have just a ton of bookmarks I don't have a absolute ton but I have several hundred like if I were to do this for my mother she has probably 10,000 bookmarks and because she just random and then none of them are organized by the way she doesn't use full I mean she has folders but she doesn't use them but the the problem is is that you know if I were to have her go through into this and then having her have to try to do this every time she set up the browser it would be I mean it would be unusable so that's bookmarks management now in terms of settings you'll notice if we go to the settings p panel for on Google Chromium that they're completely different now on Google Chromium uses the Chrome settings panel. If you go to Chrome, if you go to settings in Chrome, you'll notice that they look pretty much the same. The only difference here between this and actual Chrome is that they pulled out all the Google stuff. You can go through and import your bookmarks and settings. You can change the appearance, select different privacy stuff. One of the things you will want to do is go through and click privacy and security and then cookies and other data and then scroll down here where it says clear all cook clear cookies and site data for when you close the browser. By default, this is on. You want to turn that off. Okay. Especially if you want to stay logged into stuff because if you like log into YouTube or you log into Facebook or log into any site, it doesn't matter. That always does keeps you logged in via cookie. And if this is on by default, every time you close the browser, you'll have to re-log in when you come in. Now, if that's something that you want, that's fine. But for me, when I, you know, I have two YouTube accounts, I have two Google accounts, I have a Facebook account and Twitter account, all this stuff. And I log into all that stuff. I don't want to have to re-log into it again every time I close the browser at night. So that is just a thing for me. Now, in terms of other settings, there's appearance. You can change the search engine. By default, on Google Chromium has no search engine uh, chosen at all. So you have to go into the search engine settings and set a, a search engine for yourself. It has the standard stuff here for for search engines except for Google. So you can go have to go through and do Bing or DuckDuckGo. And uh, other than that, the biggest one here is going to be the security settings that you'll have to go through and deal with. And by default, most of the stuff is set to what you probably want, but there are some things that you're going to have to go through and finagle. The one thing that it's missing is like the the profile settings. So where you can go through and set uh, certain security profiles that are either more strict or less strict or stuff like that. And I don't know if that's something that Chrome just doesn't have or if it's something that Brave has added, but it doesn't have that as far as I can tell. Now, for Brave and, and their settings, I believe they started off with the same base, but they've gone through and added a lot of stuff that are, is Brave specific. So for example, Sync is here. If you wanted to go through and set up a new Sync, sync chain, you could, would go through and click Sync, start new chain and then it's going to ask you to follow the directions whether if you're on a phone it's going to ask you to scan a QR code if you're on a uh, another desktop I'm not actually sure how that's done I've never I haven't synced anything between another desktop yet I'm still using on Google Chromium on that one back there for other things there's shields which I talked about a little bit earlier this is their implementation of like uh, blocking advertisements and stuff like that and also will allow you to block scripts upgraded connection to HTTP, HTTPS and things like fingerprint blocking and cookie blocking are all on this page here. They've also add thing, added things like social media blocking, and they have this whole Brave Rewards thing, which is their cryptocurrency nonsense and showing your ads and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into that too much because, like I said, I consider it mostly nonsense. Uh, you're never going to come here and get rich. I think I've, I've been using this now for a month. I think I've earned a dollar. I mean, it's a dollar, but still, 
Uh, it, you're not going to come here and become Elon Musk by watching Brave ads or whatever. So in terms of settings and stuff, there's more functionality for settings in Brave than there is on Google Cr Chromium. And that's not even counting the sync thing. The, th the sync thing is going to be completely different between them as we discussed. But there's also other things that you can do in Brave that you can't do on Google Chrome. And things like the shield, things like social media blocking, and there's more privacy and security stuff here in Brave than there is on, in on Google Chromium. And that's simply because uh, Google Chromium hasn't added any features. They've just taken the Google stuff out and then presented a browser. For Brave, they've taken Chromium, or they, well, they've, they've taken Chromium, and they've pulled the Google stuff out, but they've also put stuff in. You know what I mean? So... I think if you're looking for a more full-featured browser, you're going to find that in Brave, and I don't think that you'd ever find that in, in Google Chromium. Even if you're looking for a more private browser, I would say Brave is more of a private browser than in Google Chromium, simply because it has more tweakability. You can go through and tweak it to your privacy settings that you want, whereas while you can do that in, in Google Chromium, it's not there's not as many tweaks there that you can do in order to make yourself more private. Now, if you're really looking for a private browser, I would say use neither of these things and use Firefox or something like Tor or Waterfox or one of those Firefox forks that is actually built for privacy. Neither of these are going to win the privacy crown in terms of being the most private browser out there. In terms of comparing the two, I would say Brave probably is a little bit more privacy focused than on Google Chromium simply because they've added more privacy features in, into it. Now, for me personally, Brave gets the victory here simply because of the syncing functionality. The ability to sync my bookmarks, at least, between my phone and my desktop is just an absolute must and because a Google Chrome doesn't even have that it just doesn't exist right so Brave kind of wins by default because of that one feature in terms of actual use though if if I ignore the syncing capabilities the actual use between the two browsers is exactly the same if you took out the Brave parts that blatantly shout Brave at you every five minutes in terms of an ad. If you took that part out and you took the shields out of Brave, like if you covered them with duct tape or something, you would not be able to tell the difference between the functionality of one or the other. I mean, you really, really wouldn't. Now, the settings panel would probably tip it off because they do look different. But in terms of just going to a website, going to Facebook, going to YouTube, going to Reddit, whatever, the functionality is exactly the same and the UI is so similar. There's a reason why at the beginning of this video, I had in one, I had my channel up and the other I had Zany so I could tell them apart. In terms of functionality... They're exactly the same. So which one should you choose and which one am I choosing? So for other people, would I recommend either of these browsers? I think Brave is probably the better browser between the two of them, but I do think that they're a little bit too focused on their crypto nonsense. It's fine, and I know a lot of people like cryptocurrency stuff like that, and they're, they're deep into it, and they're very passionate about it. And I know I'll get somebody in the comment section saying, hey, you should take cryptocurrency more seriously. It's not for me. I'm, if I miss becoming a billionaire because of Bitcoin, so be it. I'll, I'll, I'll earn my money um, you know, another way. I'm never going to be a billionaire anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The point is, Brave is a good browser, except for the cryptocurrency stuff. I would wish that they had all of the Brave features, but without the cryptocurrency stuff, you can turn that stuff off. I haven't yet. Like, I've I've just kind of learned to put up with advertising. At the, you know, it comes up with a Dunst ad advertisement once every 15 minutes or so. I've learned to put up with it. Mostly because I wanted to kind of experiment to say, you know, how, how much money could you possibly earn by using this full-time for a month? And it turns out it's about a dollar. I, I won't spend that all in one place. Don't worry about that. Um, you, you can't even buy anything for a dollar these days. So I don't know what, I, I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter. So for most people, I think Brave would be the, the, the choice here simply because it has more settings and is more fully featured. Uh, if you're more privacy focused, I wouldn't even choose either of these things. So, But if you were to choose between them, Brave would also still be the choice. If you want the purest Chromium experience, I, I guess you would choose on Google Chromium. At that point, I don't know why you wouldn't just choose Chromium, though. I mean, because... Yes, they haven't pulled all the Google stuff out of Chromium, but really the only Google thing that was ever in Chromium really was the syncing functionality, and they've taken that part out of Chromium too. So between those two browsers, you're kind of hamstringing yourself in terms of functionality either way you go. So 
I don't know under what circumstance you would choose on Google Chromium over Brave. I, I kind of don't, simply because I'm the kind of person who wants more features. I enjoy... Well, okay, so I, I say this. I want more features that make sense. I don't want Vivaldi's more features, which is... They're like, oh, more features? Let's put more features in. Here's the, what, an email client. <laughs> you know? I don't want that meant more features. I just want enough features that allow me to tweak the, the, the browser... And Brave seems to have gone in that direction. They, they have enough settings there to make it customizable without also making it feel bloated. So Brave is probably the selection for me as well. The question is, how long do I stay on it? Everybody knows I kind of hop browsers more than I hop distros. So there's a good chance that eventually I'll be leaving Brave for something else. But the thing is, Brave has mostly been a very good experience for me. I've Just ignoring the cryptocurrency stuff, for the most part, has been a very good experience. My only downside that I can say, and that applies to both of these browsers, is that it doesn't work with Netflix. And I'm going to keep trying to solve that because, I mean, somebody has to have got it working, right? Because it's, it's just Chromium, right? I mean, you'd think so. Anyways, so that is it for this video. If you have a selection between these two browsers, let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. I really do appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. Before I go, I would like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Today, Devon, East Coast Web, Gen 2, Fun 2, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jack Snipe, Tool, Steve Ake, CyberGuy, Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Sean, Jeremy, Odin, Merrick, Camp, Josh Lee, J Dog, The Beasties, Rock, Peter A, Crucible, and Dark Bandit 6. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.